Okay, this video is about black body radiation. So this links to the idea that we know that objects give off infrared radiation, but we have to look at this particular sort of thing called a black body. Um, so to get us thinking about this, imagine that we've got a, a box here. It's totally reflective, so any radiation that hits the outside of this box will reflect off it. And I've hung two balls in here. One is 60 degrees C, and the other is also 60 degrees C, but one is black and one is white. Okay, what's going to happen to these two balls sat in this box, bearing in mind they're both going to give off and absorb radiation? Well, the first thing to think is that black is the best emitter of radiation, so the black will be giving off a lot more radiation than the white one. So at this point, what you might imagine is that the black one will cool down much faster than the white one. But we need to think on a little bit further, because black is also the best colour at absorbing radiation. So after the radiation is reflected round inside the box, sooner or later it's going to hit one of these two balls, but if it hits the black ball it's much more likely to be absorbed. So we don't find that the black ball gets cooler and cooler and cooler and the white one gets hotter and hotter and hotter, because the black one is both emitting and absorbing the most radiation. Right, so all those arrows are a bit confusing, so we've just simplified it down to, um, like a Sankey diagram, two arrows. So this is the amount of radiation the black ball is absorbing, and this is the amount of radiation that it's emitting, and you'll see those two arrows are the same width, which means that the temperature is staying the same. It's absorbing and emitting the same amount of radiation. The white ball is absorbing less radiation, but it's also emitting less radiation, so it is also in what we call thermal equilibrium. It's staying at the same temperature. Okay, so we can try and look at stars. This is um, the Orion constellation. And you'll notice that some of the stars in Orion are different colours. So stars, if you if you look at them carefully enough, are not all white, um, even though sometimes they seem that way to your eye. Okay, you'll see that stars are actually different colours. So this star in particular up here, you'll notice is definitely a different colour to this star down here in the bottom right hand corner. And we're going to look at what this actually tells us. So the first thing we need to do is to define what a black body is. So a black body is one that looks black normally. So if you if it's cool, it will look black. And why does it look black? Well, it looks black because it absorbs visible light, and it will also absorb infrared radiation. Okay. So if it is a perfect absorber, all right, then all the radiation that hits it is absorbed. Okay. If, but if that was the only thing that happened, what would happen to its temperature? Well, it would just get hotter and hotter and hotter. So what we find out is that black bodies also must be very good emitters of radiation. So it turns out that a black body is a perfect absorber and a perfect emitter of radiation. Okay, the slightly confusing bit now, of course, is that if it gets really hot, then it doesn't just give off infrared radiation, but it starts to give off visible light. So if it gets to a thousand degrees C, it starts to look red hot. And if it gets to about three and a half thousand degrees C, it starts to look white hot. So even though it's white, we still say it's a black body because it's a it's still absorbing all the radiation that hits it. It's still a perfect emitter of radiation, but because it's emitting white light, it looks white to us. So for example, the sun is often called a black body, which is obviously quite confusing when you look at the sun and go, well that's not black but it's not black because it's making its own radiation. It's not reflecting the radiation that hits it. So here's a little video just to try to explain how the color can tell us the temperature. So it's just a light bulb filament. And what we're doing with this light bulb filament is just slowly increasing the current through it so that it gets hotter. So you'll see here it's about a thousand degrees Celsius and it's just faintly glowing, but it's glowing red. So it's the color here more than the brightness that we're looking at. And then as we slowly increase the current, you'll see the current start, the color starts to change. So by the time it's 1500 degrees C, it's starting to go kind of more of an orange yellow color. And then as it gets to 2000 degrees C, it's definitely getting quite sort of yellowy, almost going white. And as it gets hotter and hotter and hotter, the color goes more and more towards white. Okay, this bit here is just a reflection off the back of the light bulb, which does have some interesting features, but let's just focus on the color for now. So you'll still see a bit of yellow, but we're kind of white hot by the time we're 3000 degrees Celsius. It's looking pretty much white hot. Okay, so you'll see that the temperature can tell us the color, or the color can tell us the temperature. 
Okay, so if we go back to Orion, right, if I think about this star up here and this star down here, we can actually tell now which is the hot star and which is the cool star. So this is a star called Betelgeuse. It's only about 3,000 degrees Celsius on its surface. This is a star called Rigel, which is 11,000 degrees. So it's so hot that it's not only white, it's actually gone through white hot and become blue hot. Okay, so then we need to try to apply this to the radiation hitting the Earth. So the energy from the Sun is about 1.3 kilowatts for every meter squared of the Earth. If the Earth was a cold black body, okay, so again you look at the Earth and the Earth definitely is not a black body, um, which does mean that this is a bit of an approximation, but it'll give you the right sort of idea. Imagine the Earth cooled down to minus 50 degrees C, it would be receiving 1.3 kilowatts, but only emitting half a kilowatt at minus 50 degrees C. Well, that's not in thermal equilibrium. As you can see, there is more energy being absorbed by the Earth than has been emitted. So what's going to happen is the Earth will heat up. Right? As it heats up, the amount of radiation emitted will increase until eventually the amount of emitted radiation is equal to the amount of absorbed radiation at a certain temperature, and for the Earth that temperature is about 20 degrees Celsius, so the average temperature of the Earth somewhere around 20 degrees Celsius, it's in thermal equilibrium. Obviously this changes over the day and over the seasons, but that's just looking at the Earth as a whole. So that looks like a fairly straightforward picture. The Earth is now in thermal equilibrium. It's receiving this, absorbing the same amount of energy from the Sun as it's emitting. But the, co the picture is a little bit more complicated than that, because the energy from the Sun has got a relatively short wavelength. It's A lot of it is in the visible part of the spectrum or the short wavelengths of infrared. And when the short wavelengths hit the atmosphere, what happens is a little bit of it is reflected, but most of it is transmitted. That energy is then absorbed by the Earth, but when it's emitted again, it comes out as long wavelengths, because the Earth is nowhere near as hot as the Sun, obviously, so the wavelengths of the radiation it gives off are much longer. What happens when long wavelengths hit the atmosphere? Well, some is still transmitted, but a fair bit of it is reflected back. And this makes our picture from previously a bit more complicated. So here's our Earth with our very exaggerated atmosphere. Here's our 1.3 kilowatts coming from the Sun per meter squared. Most of that radiation goes into the atmosphere and is absorbed by the Earth. A little bit is reflected. The Earth then emits that radiation at longer wavelengths, but when those longer wavelengths are trying to go through the atmosphere, quite a lot of that is reflected. So if you look at the overall picture, if you ignore all this part in the middle now, there is more radiation coming in than there is going out. So what's going to happen here is that the Earth again will heat up because it's absorbing more radiation than it's emitting. Okay, so when the Earth gets hotter, what happens is the same thing happens at the start. But in order for the equilibrium to be maintained, more radiation must be emitted so that the same amount of radiation can actually escape from the Earth as is coming in. So this arrow here, the amount of radiation that actually hits the Earth, and this arrow here, the amount of radiation that escapes from the Earth, must be the same width. But the only way that can happen is if the Earth has got hotter, and that is global warming. And of course the better the atmosphere is, at trapping this heat in, at reflecting the heat radiation back in, the better it is um, at heating the Earth up and the hotter the Earth gets. Okay, so we can look at some quick questions here. So if the Earth has a constant average temperature, what does this tell us about the amount of radiation absorbed and emitted by the Earth? Well, they must be the same amount. Okay, because it's in thermal equilibrium, the absorbed and radiated, the emitted powers are the same. The Sun is much hotter than the Earth, so in terms of the radiation, the peak wavelength from the Sun must be much shorter, so the radiation given off by the Sun has a much shorter wavelength than the radiation from the Earth. But remember, the longer wavelengths have a much bigger percentage which is reflected. So if the atmosphere gets better at reflecting, at reflecting these longer wavelengths, what happens is the heat gets trapped inside the atmosphere and the Earth will get hotter until the emitted and absorbed radiation become equal again. There are a lot of assumptions there, and the biggest one is the Earth is a black body. Well, clearly the Earth is not a black body, it's not, and 
there is an interesting implication of this, which is that the poles of the Earth in particular are white because they're covered in uh, ice. And if you get too much global warming, the ice melts, the Earth is better at absorbing radiation, which means it will get even hotter.